Shall we begin? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Enough to Keep Going podcast. This is episode number 344 for June 30th, 2024. I'm your host, Master 99 I am back again because I've been in and out these past few months. Uh, with me tonight, we only have one other person, Mr. DBQ Hams. DB, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Realized I'm a little sunburned from today, but uh, glad to have you here. It's nice to have you back. Yes, good to be back, at least for a week, because I'll probably be out again next week. So, uh, this is season. So, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of bummed that I missed last week because uh, that Nintendo Direct was uh, had come out that week before. So, but it looked like you guys covered it pretty well. So, I think we, yeah, we covered most of it. It was nice to have Swiss there. Anything big that was was kind of added to your must have list for the fall? Uh, the, um, the Mario and uh, Luigi, that game looked pretty good. Yep, uh, the Brothership. Yeah, I never really played any of the other ones before, but that one looks pre- actually pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember, like, some of the other ones I can't even remember right now. But, yeah, that, the whole Direct as a whole, actually, I thought was pretty good. So, uh, seemed to be... Yeah, I was, it was a lot more, like we said last week, the fact that it opened with a new game. Like, I was prepared for lots of ports and remasters. Yeah. So yeah. the Zelda looked pretty good too. Uh, that one looks cool, even though it's like kind of old school. Like looks more old school, but I might pick that one up. Yeah, no, I think it's it gives people a reason to, you know, not just dismiss it in a season in a fall that we already know that there's not a whole lot of big hits or at least big hitters coming. There will probably be definitely some big hits, yeah, but not necessarily big name pieces. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it surprised a lot of a lot of people from some of the reports I saw and stuff, just because everybody, since they had already said, like, you know, we're not making an announcement on the new system. So I think people thought, eh, you know, like you said, it's just going to be ports and kind of just junky, not junky, but kind of like third tier, fourth tier uh, game titles, but a lot of good stuff in there. So finally, for, yeah, the people, definitely, yep. for the people who like it, Prime 4 was shown, so an actual gameplay. So we nice. know that it exists and it's... It's coming sooner than, you know, the vaporware that it's been for the Switch's life cycle. So, <laughs> and the Donkey Kong, that's like a, that's a new, I know it's a remaster, like a remake, right? That's that's a new one, right? That has nothing to do with the previous, uh, what was it, Tropical Freeze or anything like that from before? Well, so Tropical Freeze is a follow up to Donkey Kong Country Returns, which was the retro game on the Wii. And then that game for the Wii was re released. Uh, or was released on the 3DS yeah. probably in, I don't know, 2015, somewhere in there, kind of. Um, and then, so yes, it's a remaster of that. Oh, so, okay. yep. All right, cool. All right, let's jump into our main GX stories, and I will take uh, the first one. Well, I'll, the only one. Uh, I was playing Session uh, in that on my uh, PC, or actually, I'm sorry, on my Steam Deck. I got on off of Steam Steam sale, so it's a skating sim, kind of more in vein of um, skate, uh, and the skate series kind of you know more realistic, air quotes, um, and uh, it's I just started playing it the last few days. Uh, I just bought it. I think I bought it Thursday and finally downloaded it Friday. I was playing it Friday and Saturday, a little bit of uh, this morning. Uh, I got kind of going through the tutorial. Uh, I guess first level. I don't. I'm not even sure if there's any like levels or anything after that. I think kind of just opens up and you kind of just play it. It's kind of like an open world thing, and you know, there's skaters around that you can get, um, you know, like quests and stuff from or what or whatnot. So uh, I just got into that, and I haven't had a chance to, to actually go into that to that world yet. So, but it's 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 pretty tactical. <laughs> like you use the sticks to to do everything. So it's not, you know, I think you did that in skate also a little bit. It might've been a little bit more forgiving in skate, but you know, you, you, you know, you press down, I think it's down or up on the left stick. And then you flick uh, on the right stick, you flick the opposite of whatever you're doing. And you know, that makes you jump or Ollie, I think as they call it. Um, and then when you do the jump, then you can hit one of the other sticks or I think it's the left stick. And then you can flick it, you know, to the fi- sides or the up or down, and you do like some kind of flip or, or you know, some kind of trick. So, uh, just kind of, you know, not, you know, I was used to the Tony Hawk style where you're just mashing buttons and you know, kind of automatically yeah, it's doing stuff. Yeah, more technical than Tony Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of just like you know snap to a grind and stuff like that. No, you actually got to like make sure you're you're you lined up. And I got to look at the the camera angles to see if I can change that because right now I'm kind of, you know, I'm behind it and then kind of like almost like ground level 
almost. So it's a little bit hard to see sometimes like the lines, you know, when you're trying to like hit a, hit a grind or something like that. So, or even just like, like I'm just trying to ollie up a stairs or down the stairs. And sometimes I just miss it because I, I misjudge like where it was because just the way the camp grammar angle was. But I think you can change that. I think I saw that at some point. I just didn't get a chance to mess with it yet, but I definitely want to do that. But it's, yeah, it's really nice. Um, it's, How's it um, run on the deck? Oh, it runs fine. Yeah. It runs really nice. Uh, it's, it's not fully verified. I think like the only um, thing there was a, a, a little exclamation part or mark on was like the text. It's like text, text is kind of small, but it seemed fine for me. And usually I kind of, I kind of struggle with text, but it seemed okay. Like I didn't have any problems with it, but, and I really, other than like when you put your name in, uh, I didn't really have to put any text in yet other than that. So uh, it's been fine so far. Uh, and this was, I think back, this was released back in 2022 originally uh for pretty much all the consoles except for the switch and pc and then actually the switch just got it last year uh march of last year so which i didn't realize it was on, on the switch i probably would have bought it back then but because <clears throat> i think that was back before i had the deck uh but no i got uh, playing on the deck i haven't tried it on pc yet uh, i'm sure it'll probably be fine probably be, you know run a lot better or so but i mean it looks fine on the on the on the deck so uh, i don't know how much better graphically it could be but um you know uh but yeah uh, and then there, I know, like I've seen some videos and stuff online. There's, you know, there's a, I don't know, a ton of like mods and stuff. You can, you can maps and stuff like that and skins and whatnot. So I'll have to try that out too at some point. Um, it just leaves the different. Yeah, it seems like it's still had a pretty active community for a two-year-old game. Oh yeah. Yeah. They just did actually, they had a blog post, uh, I think this past week, maybe a week and a half ago where they were just kind of like, you know, uh, I think it was their, uh, one of their anniversaries and they were just, you know, congratulating uh, or uh, kind of saying thank you to the fans and all that. So, and, you know, say they're still, they're still plugging away and, and doing updates and stuff. And there's a ton of maps in there, uh, just in the, the default maps that you can kind of go through. So it's kind of nice. So uh, I got a lot, <laughs> a lot to go through still uh, before I even do the mod stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know. Have you ever tried it out? No, I remember my son played a demo of it when it came out. Um, but yeah, it, it was too technical of a skating game for me. So nice, but I remember it getting good, good press at the time in terms of being a, a, a good kind of fundamental game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, you want to jump into your, uh, Nintendo sure. Switch later. So most of what I've been playing, I can't really talk that much about. All I can say is that I'm playing Madden 25. Uh, that is the extent of what I can say, um, from the beta that's out now. So, so not to belabor that point any, but in between there, I have been playing Battle Crush. So Battle Crush came out this week on Switch, Steam, and mobile. This is a top-down kind of um, MOBA perspective. They call it a MOBA Battle Royale. Uh, it's a Battle Royale game. You've got a variety of characters that all have different abilities, similar to a MOBA, with regular attacks, special attacks different kind of classifications in terms of kind of assassin snipers you don't have that many kind of full-on healers but you have some support characters uh and it's it, it, but then it's it's a battle royale game right you're you're on a series of islands and different characters rounds you know the the map shrinks and but it it works out i, I i'm enjoying it i Truthfully, I enjoy that perspective, like the top-down aspect of it. I enjoy, like in a MOBA, that it gives me a, a little more field of view than a traditional shooter Shooter in that uh, perspective when I'm going through and playing a Battle Royale game. So you get a little more situational awareness, a little more map awareness as well. Um, but it is... It, I'm pretty sure I'm no longer playing against bots, and I'm doing okay. Like, it, it is... It, I've played it both on mobile and on Switch. I Having a controller on Switch sure makes a difference. Uh, you get kind of regular attacks. You get some special attacks, uh, combos, ultimates. Um, similar to other Battle Royales, you, you find gear Yo, what across is going the on map. Two, two sketches There's different you drops back. and chests. Uh, and also similar to other Battle Royales, like sticking with your team, you're in a squad of three. And you, you know... Sticking, sticking with your team in any battle royale makes a difference, right? Like when you are 
not out on your own and you can team up on somebody, uh, flank them, it makes an, a nice difference. But it is, it, it moves pretty quick. Matches are probably less than 10 minutes uh, because they, uh, they're even shorter than that, actually. So it, I think every minute or so the map shrinks. So it, it works out, like it keeps the pace of it going pretty quickly. One of the things that, and I, so this is a question for you, sir, as somebody who play, who has played more Battle Royales, one of the things that it does that I don't know that I've seen in other Battle Royales when I've dipped in and out of them, and maybe those have been updated since then, but you choose on the map where you want to drop, and you see where your teammates are, and then you get kind of like a 10 second window where you can adjust your drop, where you see where the rest of the the rest of the players have selected to like, so you're not jumping out of anything. You are picking a, you know, a pin on the map, but then you have 10 seconds to kind of adjust that. And your, your character kind of moves slowly away or towards something if you're trying to reposition. And so it gives you a little bit of strategic awareness. So you have a sense of where other people are as you're coming in and you can, kind of repositioned to to be either on the aggressive and on the attack right away or to kind of avoid other players you see close to your area. So I think that that's it's a nice feature. Um, is that is that a common thing? Is that happened in other places? Uh, no, it sounds more like... So So initially, is it more like uh, kind of like Battlefield where you can kind of like pick where you want to drop or not drop, but respawn? And then, but here, obviously, you're, you're going to like fly out of you know, drop out of the sky or whatever. Yeah, and this one you don't even drop out of the sky. You just kind of spawn there. Right? Oh, okay. So it is more Battlefield-like. You can yeah. choose on the map where you want to go. Um, and so that that piece is there. It, it's it, it's a pretty quick quick, quick pace. Um, and the monetization, you know, it is, it's free to play. You, it, you don't unlock any characters super fast. Uh, it also seems like unlocking characters, similar as I talked about playing Star Wars Hunters uh, a month ago, like there was probably about $10 a character. Seems about right. Like you can earn shards for things, but you get a lot of trial tokens. So you have 10 to 15 kind of free plays with any of the characters. And then at least within this opening window of its launch, they're giving out, you know, you. I, I think I have like five to seven different trial tokens that then kind of give you an extra ten trials with each of the characters. So it'll be. I I haven't spent enough time to really get into the monetization aspect, but in terms of the gameplay, it's pretty fun. Um, it is. You do link accounts, so you can be playing, you know, on multiple multiple devices and keep your same profile which is nice as well nice. um it's by ncsoft is the developer who's done a lot of mobile stuff uh, they also did guild wars lineage uh yeah. things like that nice so uh, I'm, I'm sorry if you had said this earlier but how, how many teams are there all together um that's a good question i think it probably is it looks like based on the characters maybe six teams yeah, right. um so you're, you're drop. I think maybe eight, maybe ten teams. So like you're starting with thirty, um, somewhere in there is what it looks like. Okay. Is this so, is this just Switch or is it it's for everything? Do you know? Uh, right now it's Switch, it's PC, and mobile. Uh, at least that's what it is on the website. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, I've seen it on each of the storefronts. In, in terms of linking your account, uh, it's set up for PlayStation, Xbox as well. So potentially it's down the road. Um, but it, you know, I think the challenge with any, it's like a double, it's a one-two punch of having the challenge of being a mobile game in this market where you need to kind of find an audience relatively quickly, right? The last time you were on, we were talking about uh, Squad Busters. Uh, from Supercell and kind of the, you know, they've been coming out with updates over the course of the past month, uh, but it's also pretty easy for uh, a mobile game to kind of get lost in the, in the crowd. And uh, then the challenge is also when you're a battle royale game, if you don't have a player population and it's not, you know, I think potentially being free to play on switch probably helps it um, so much in terms of, of giving some more accessibility outside of mobile, but 
each of the matches, it probably takes 20 to 30 seconds to find a match. So uh, I, I would have thought, you know, based on even just Hunters, like it was 10 seconds within the during the first kind of opening week of it. So it would be interesting to see what the player population ends up looking like and how long it kind of sticks around. But for a, a nice little kind of quick side project, uh, Battle Crush is, is an easy kind of pick up and play game. Nice. And all matches, how long? Did you say? I'm sorry. I don't know if you said that or not. Like ten. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think they were. I was. They're less than ten minutes a match. Okay. So I don't remember the clock itself. I think, like I got within fifteen minutes, I got in two different matches. So. Oh, okay. Um, it seems to you know it accelerates the paces as the map gets tighter and tighter. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I have to I have to check that out. Might be something. You can uh, throw on the Steam Deck, maybe. Uh, play yeah, there. Uh, it says unsupported right now, but I would think there's no reason that it should be. Yeah. Um, contr- you know, it works. Controller works really nicely on the Switch. Nice. Yeah, I've been finding out a lot lately that sometimes that's <laughs> when it does say unsupported, it is unsupported. So even though it looks like it shouldn't be, uh, but right. I, I don't, yep. I don't Doesn't. Think, uh, it's, a lot of it is just that whether or not they've done the work to to make it supported. Yeah. And, Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Yeah, there's one, uh, I didn't put it on here, but uh, Fallen Aces is one that I was hoping it was, I know they're working on it now. Uh, it hasn't been Steam uh, ready yet, but yeah. I know they said that they're working on it. So uh, so I played that a little bit a... on PC, but. Did you? Okay, we'll yeah. have to talk about that. I have picked it up. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, so. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah I didn't yeah, put it on the rundown just definitely. because, yeah. I, yeah, I haven't played too much, so I didn't want to throw anything out there yet, so. Okay, well, then I'll save my time for it for whenever you come back after your vacation so yeah we can uh, talk about it then nice yeah it's pretty cool from uh, the little i've played of it so far so uh, all right nice. let's jump into the main news headlines uh first up i have uh some new hardware from valve no not another steam deck not yet at least no steam 2 um no no new controller from them but there is a new controller for specifically i guess for steam from uh uh hori i believe is the manufacturer that's making these steam controllers um and this i got this from steamdeckhq.com excuse me um uh and actually you know what i skipped my first uh, <laughs> i st- skipped my first news article I no that's okay yeah uh, it's got uh yeah. gy- gy- gyro support uh customizable buttons it looks you know it's got the offset analog sticks like an xbox controller it, it it does not have uh, the pad like uh, the original Steam controller did in terms of the the mouse piece. Like it has just a D pad uh, rather than any type of track, uh, you know, track ball tracking type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, and at first, because I mean, I guess that's kind of. I mean, it, it's basically like a regular controller that we've seen on you know, Xbox or PlayStation and stuff. But it it kind of looked leaned at first when I was looking at it more toward the PlayStation. Uh, kind of design but yeah like you said the, the sticks are offset so uh that's actually really nice so uh, maybe pick one up i mean i don't um i mean i already have like that all the xbox controllers work for these things so uh which is nice but you know just to check you know test it out and check it out uh would be kind of cool just to see you know uh, how these controllers work uh they have the uh continuous button pressing or rapid fire mode too for the face button so the old uh you know Hold down the button. Turbo button from yeah, yep. tur- turbo button. Yeah, from the old the old uh, controllers back in the day. So that's nice. But yeah, uh, yeah, look, they look pretty nice. Uh, they have the picture here on the website. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, it'll be uh, something pretty cool to pick up. Probably work will work on the Steam Deck too. But I mean, I don't, I don't usually have the Steam Deck like docked or you know in some kind of you know um, portable like just stand mode. I think that's how um, uh, Game Logic would play it a lot of times. Uh, on his, uh, mainly on a Switch too, but I think on, he was doing a little bit on a Steam Deck. I think the Steam Deck usually had a docked, but I don't have a dock for mine. I don't really, I don't really, I just use it handheld. I don't think I've ever had a dock, any kind of dock, even though I probably have stuff that I can plug it into my PC or my monitor and stuff. It's just like, I have a PC, so there's no point of, you know, plugging my Steam Deck in there, but uh, that's a nice feature. Yeah, there's enough. Yes. Yep. No, I think it sounds like it should work with the deck, so. Yeah, I know a lot of people like to play like that, so, uh, 
a lot of podcasts too when I'm, when I'm listening to uh, uh, them they like to play it that way uh, e- even the uh, Switch 2 is you know people like to play it with the, with the controller which uh, understandable like uh, the deck a little bit better than like a, you know a Joy-Con but still you know still not, not as good as a regular controller but um, it'll be interesting to see how these um, these do and I think right now I think this was originally from a I think it was like a Japanese tweet or yes. something yep. I believe yeah so but I'm assuming they'd come over here at some point yeah the announcement is from Japan it gives a yen price uh, which translates to around $50 but it's supposed to be coming out this fall sometime yeah so actually pretty good price too so 50 bucks uh, well I'm assuming it's you know it it's the same thing but maybe it's like 60 here or something but it's still even that that's not too bad co- considering some of the controllers nowadays so you're looking at 80 usually uh, uh, so at, at the very least but uh, but yeah very cool uh, I'm very uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how these do all right and keeping on with uh, my Steam Deck uh, HQ uh, there's another announcement for game recording uh, natively on, on Steam Deck. So not right now. You can do it through, I think it's Decky, the Decky plugin, um, where, you know, there's all kinds of different little tools that uh, you can use through that plugin. And one of them is screen recording uh, and screen capture. You can do screen capture now uh, natively on the deck, but there was no recording before, but it looks like that is that will be coming out at some point in the near future. Uh, right now you can use it, uh, but only if you're doing the, uh, the beta or like the testing, the preview um, builds uh, of the OS. Um, but so, uh, you'll be able to pretty much like any other game recording, you can, you know, um, uh, pick the desired length, uh, and quality of the, of the clips, or if you want to record like a whole play session, I, it looks like you can do that too. Just a little bit more advanced, I guess, than, um, some of the other ones. The other ones are usually just like clips, like on Xbox, that's usually just a clip, uh, that you can do, but, uh, it's kind of a nice thing just to have natively, you know, you don't have to use any kind of third party, you know, software or anything like that. So that'll be nice to, to have baked in there. Um, I know on most most other systems or even like on PC, it's usually like a you know hold hold down a button. Uh, I know like on the Switch and uh, even on the Steam Deck with the with that Decky lo- um, plugin, uh, it's just you hold it down you know for a few seconds. Other than just pressing it, which usually just takes the photo, so it'll probably just I'm assuming it'll work the same way. But so it'll be cool. Uh, I do I do a, f- a good amount of I guess screen captures with the decky not as much as say on the switch and stuff i'm usually playing more single player games so unless something like you know really weird or odd or spectacular happens i'm not going to usually do any kind of recordings but it's still nice to have you know to uh, you know uh, get those moments when something strange like that happens or you know a cool goal or something if you're playing sports or whatever so uh, i don't know if you've played around with your deck too much if you've installed that plugin i have not installed that plugin no most of my plugins have been more kind of running additional platforms like Battle.net or Epic. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's very cool. So I'm excited for that to, to come out in the future. I don't think they had a, an actual official release date uh, going through this article, but uh, like I said, you can do it through the beta program. So it's probably within the next like month or two, I'm sure uh, early fall at the latest, I'm sure. So uh, we'll have that to look forward to. And now you have some Xbox news. For us. Yeah, so Xbox announced that they are the uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming will be coming to Amazon's Fire Stick. So we uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming has been out on some Samsung Samsung TVs. There we go, got there uh, for what two years almost now. Uh, last year there were a lot of rumors about whatever stick-like device that Amazon that. Uh, Microsoft was potentially developing for cloud gaming, and it to me it always made sense that rather than creating their own hardware for a stick, that they would partner with other existing devices. And Apple's uh, makes a whole lot of sense. So, especially since Amazon's already proved with Luna that their streaming uh, can handle pretty well with their their sticks. So it's going to work on the two high-end sticks, so the Fire Stick 4K and the Fire Stick 4K Max. The 4K Max has a little faster of a processor uh, and a little more storage space in it as well. Um, So the low-end, the kind of non-4K ones uh, will not work. I think the what I'm interested here is as as a house that has got one, two, three, four Fire Sticks hooked up at different places, like. I'd be curious to see how this works uh, over Wi-Fi, where I 
hooking up a, a fire stick to a, a, a network cable is has always been kind of a, a not a very clean cut you know unlike google's uh chromecast where there was a network port already built into it so you could do that you know that's why stadio was as smooth as it was at times because you could have it a, have a direct wired connection so i would be very curious to see what it looks like in terms of of stability uh but if you've been playing other things on cloud gaming over wi-fi whether it's on your phone or a tablet I would think it's going to be relatively straightforward in that same capacity. That if things have been working on your your home network, it probably will continue to to work similarly. This does support uh, Bluetooth enabled controllers, so that gives a lot of options there to connect in. So I think it it as Microsoft has been talking about really trying to get Game Pass on in as many places as possible, that bringing it to streaming devices makes a whole lot of sense. Whether or not it cuts through anything, like if this is how people are going to, somebody who doesn't have a console but watches a lot of streaming is going to sign up for Game Pass, I don't know if it cuts through or if it just becomes a, a convenience for existing members. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I tried out the, uh, the Samsung uh, app when it came out uh, about a year ago, I think. Well, I think it came out before that, only for like the newer TVs, I think at first, and then eventually they uh, they did it for older TVs. I think mine was probably like a year, maybe even two years older than uh, what was out there at the time. Um, but yeah, it ran fine. Like uh, I didn't have any issues. Um, There's, I didn't see any like noticeable lag or anything. I just had it on Wi-Fi, even though I had my modem was right there. I could have plugged it in if I wanted to, uh, but I just tried out the, the Wi-Fi because I knew I wasn't gonna, you know, I have my Xbox there anyway, so there's kind of no point to use the TV one. But you know, if like if I had like another TV or maybe like my son had a, a Samsung TV in his room or something, uh, you know, he could play it that way instead of having a, you know, buying a whole other Xbox. So it'd be a lot cheaper. So yeah, I could see how, you know, this might kind of help out in the future. Maybe not so much now, but you know, um, in the future when, you know, maybe there's, maybe there is only one uh, system out there <laughs> as we've seen some articles uh, with people from the PlayStation side commenting how they kind of want the, True. Yep. Yep. the unified. Former Sean. Yeah. Former Sony executive Sean Layton, where he's talking about one system. Yep, a couple of weeks ago. No, I think that this is, you know, as whatever comes next for it's probably less of a of a home run in in the current market as it is setting up technology for whatever the next generation is. That if if as we move into whatever the next cycle console cycle is, that if things are you have a high end. Xbox, uh, but you also have this kind of low-end affordability of streaming on devices that you already own. It it also makes the use case uh, for staying engaged with Game Pass. Um, so yeah, I, I could see it. It's a nice kind of marketing position uh, in kind of that future play as they've been talking about cloud gaming uh, for quite a while now, as we saw for half a year as they were going through the FTC uh, court case and everything else. So, or the hearings, not quite a court case, yeah. but no, I think, I mean, for me, I'm excited about it because I've got a fire stick hooked up to a TV next to my treadmill that if I can, you know, go for a walk and play a, a turn-based strategy game or a RPG, something that doesn't need a lot of high latency, uh, low latency, um, you know, that, that opens up the ability to keep churning on some games that I, I'm not connected to a, a hard console for. Yeah, and, and the, these sticks go, let's see, oh, they have the 50 and $60 here, it says in the uh, the article here. Uh, respectively yeah, but for those sticks one. go on sale for 25 to $40 on a regular basis, so. Yeah, it's a good alternative, you know, like if you have multiple kids and, you know, you don't want to buy multiple Xboxes, obviously, or, you know, systems, you know, just throw one of those on there, so. Yep. Yeah. For it provides sure. an affordable alternative. Yep. All right. You want to keep on your, well, we're going to keep on the, I guess, Microsoft and PlayStation news here. Sure. Yeah. No, I think this one's a relatively quick one. Uh, this came out, this was last week, so we didn't cover this the, the week ago. I just kind of picked it up because it is, as Microsoft is, has continued to talk about putting things on a variety of places and that their console market is we know is in third place, a, a far distant third place that there is. So this is a story coming from the game developer 
uh, about creating Microsoft is cre developing a native version of Minecraft for the PlayStation 5. Obviously, Minecraft is already on the PlayStation 5. It's on a little bit of everything. But I think it it to me it spoke to it was a nice kind of pairing with the the Amazon Game Pass article in terms of Microsoft's play is much more about getting its games in a variety of, you know, in as many places as possible. And knowing the, the market share for PlayStation 5, that having something that's developed natively potentially opens up uh, maybe, you know, again, this is, it's Minecraft. It doesn't need to have, you know, it's going to run just fine already, but potentially a, a native one takes advantage of some of the other features in uh, on the PlayStation 5 in terms of the DualSense controller. Um, and I think it, again, just kind of speaks to the fact that it is uh, Mine Minecraft and Microsoft are, you know, they're going to they're gonna try to find their money any place they can because finding it solely on the console market has, has not worked so well for the last 10 15 years or so 12 years i guess right since xbox one in 23 and 13 so yeah i didn't realize they didn't have a native uh version for the ps5 ps5 excuse me uh i think it was a few weeks ago maybe even a month ago like i had read an article about it and i was like oh wow that's weird it's, you're basically just using the you know the ps4 version yeah you're uh, playing the point. ps4 version yeah. yep but i don't know yeah it's good it's good that you know it's working on it maybe a little late in the game for the PS5 at least because, you know, we'll have a new, possibly new hardware within a year or two, but I, I, it's, I guess it's better than nothing. And uh, I just find it kind of funny too how how when Microsoft bought uh, Mo Mojang, you know, basically Minecraft because that's their primary game, you know, and people were just like, why, why would you do that? Like, well, you know, and then, you know, years later, here we go. You know, it's still trekking along. You know, I think people always right. think of it, even even though it's on everything and, you know, anything you can think of, it's sold millions. It's probably one of the highest grossing, you know, games out there. But, you know, people still kind of like kind of rag on it sometimes, but it's it's still going. You know, like it's still, you know, you got Fortnite and, you know, people talk about Fortnite and um, um, Roblox and stuff like that. But I mean, Minecraft's been there like the whole time. So it's just really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think you mentioned at the top of the show about the the Zelda uh, Wisdom game for the Switch this fall, right? Like that is in that, just like Tears of the Kingdom was, very much in that kind of create your own fun, uh, solve your puzzles in a variety of different ways. Uh, that is to a byproduct of the Minecraft generation of people that grew up with Minecraft and that kind of freedom of gameplay to be able to approach things in a variety of ways. And, and make their own fun out of things. So I think it it has, as you said, it's continued to be, a, you know, continue to be a hit, continue to be a top seller, and to be a cultural, have a lot of cultural relevance for the past, what, 2010 was probably the first, uh, maybe spring of 2011 was its first release. So Yeah, it's official you know, release, yeah. But it was going yep. on for like a year or two before that, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yep. All right, so we've had oh. new hardware and software well, Things that releases. are going on for a long time yeah. and things that are now being delisted. Uh, this is not a surprise. Uh, Forza, Forza 4, uh, Play, Playground Games announced that Forza 4 is being delisted on December 15th. All the DLC was taken down on Xbox. Uh, it looks, as of the announcement on, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, that it, you could still, the DLC was still up on Steam. Uh, so, but it, it is all licensing based. This happened with uh, Forza Seven, Forza Motorsport Seven, that uh, because of uh, both uh, both music license and car license, uh, that they kind of cycle their way through. Uh, this happens with a lot of music games. We've seen this with uh, you know Rock Band, Guitar Hero over time. Granted, Guitar Hero never sat on a shelf long enough to be de delisted, but. We certainly have seen that with Rock Band, uh, just that as as you know, we've seen that with other games that have come down because of licensing things, whether that's, uh, what, um, Transformers, the multiple different Transformer games, whether it's the Activision one or the Platinum one, Transformers Devastation, 
uh, are kind of off of stores, uh, off of uh, marketplaces because they are, you know, their license with Hasbro uh, expired. So this is not unique. Uh, one of the things that uh, Playground Games that Xbox has done in the past with these is put them on a pretty heavy discount. They give you plenty of runway. You know, this is six months out basically to say, if you want it, now's your chance. Like, and they even, in the, the press release around it, they talked about that it's going to go on discount. It's on sale right now during the Steam sale for, what, $12, $13? Uh, they're talking about heavy discounts in July for Xbox. And uh, there's also some Xbox announcements around it, but I haven't uh, seen it myself in terms of a, a message. I own the, the Lego DLC for Forza 4 that if you've purchased any DLC for Forza 4, that they will be giving you a, a code to be able to claim the full game, uh, which is also what they did with uh, Forza, Forza 7 as well, is that if you had purchased any DLC, you got, the, you got a code for the full game uh, prior to it being delisted. So it's a nice way to kind of, you know, continue on and not lose access to your purchases as we talk about things that come off of stores or servers uh, you know the story we had a couple months ago about the crew ubisoft's the crew uh, the original b servers being shut down so it was no longer functional that that you know you're not losing access to things that you've paid some money toward whether it's the full game or or dlc around it yeah at least you still be able to play it though i mean afterwards so uh that's the I know some of those games, it's like, I think with the crew, actually, you can't even play it anymore because it was, I think that was tied yes, just because right. it was online it's, only, right? Or online. It was online connection. only. Yep. Yeah. It needed a verification. Yep. Yeah. So. So, yeah. At least you still have your stuff. Yeah. I was thinking about this too when I first saw this uh, article or just, you know, story about it. And I was like, oh, wow. I can't believe they're doing that. But then I remembered, like, the, I thought it was, I thought it was one of the other Frozen Horizon, but you said it was one of the Forts, just the regular Forts. I mean, it probably also happened to Forza Horizon 3. Uh, that makes sense, the previous one. But yes, it also happened for Forza 7 as well. Right. So yep, I think in 6 probably had this. I think it's it's just the nature of the uh, of the licensing agreements. Yeah. Yeah, it stinks. But, you know, I guess if you have it, you, you know, you still have it. You can still at least buy it uh, for a little bit still. But uh all right. You want to continue with the Forge of Talk? Right? Sure. As we go into I'll our continue Robin. right on, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, as we head into what else we've been playing this week, uh, because of that announcement, I went back and re-downloaded Forza 4 and uh, played around a little bit with it, uh, remembering kind of the feel of it, which also got me back into Forza 5. Uh, I had purchased the Hot Wheels DLC. I don't know. It came... It was on sale at some point in time over the last two years since it's been out. Um, but I never really had gone into the Hot Wheels DLC. And so spent a lot of time this week kind of tooling around in Forza uh, 4 and 5 of Horizons. And it is just a reminder. For as much as I enjoy the tightness and the, the focus of motorsports in terms of uh, you are here to race. Um, I also enjoy the, the randomness and the uh, landscape-breaking aspects of the, the Horizon series. Uh, so it, and the fact, like, coming back to them, especially in, in 4, like, my map is just covered in things. Like, uh, there, is, there is no shortage of things to do in those games, and they definitely talk about the amount of uh, gameplay and value that you get for your purchase, that there's a, there's a lot there. If that's, you know, if you bounced off it at some point in time, it's still, I mean, I haven't played five in any seriousness probably since you and GameLogic and I were playing online for a couple of races back within the first month or two that it came out. Uh, so coming back into it and getting a feel for it again, there's... It, in, by the nature of talking about games on a podcast, uh, I, it's easy to bounce off things because I feel like we always have something new to talk about. Uh, but these are the types of games, just like so many others, uh, where you can spend months and years just kind of living in these worlds. Yeah, I was just thinking while you're talking, yeah, it's been a while since I've... I, I probably played it a little bit longer after we had played that those few sessions that we did, uh, but not much... <laughs> And I, yeah, I haven't really gone back 
Uh, just every once in a while, sometimes my son will want to play it. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll jump in and do some races and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was a fun time. I definitely wanted to, to go back and, and I did get the, um, I think for five, I got the Hot Wheel DLC. I think you got the Hot Wheels. I remember yeah. you talking about it. Yeah. But yep. I, I didn't get to. And the Lego one for four is, is pretty fun. So. Yeah, I didn't get to do too many races with that one, though. So I definitely want to go back. And I'm sure when I go in there, I'll have like a billion things that I'll, <laughs> I'll have to unlock Pop and up. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. It's a, it's no, but I just I kind of mainlined it right to the, the DLC for the Hot Wheels stuff. And it's been a lot of fun. Like it is it, for it, the Hot Wheels. That Hot Wheels DLC came out shortly thereafter of the Hot Wheels Unleashed, the, the racing game. And it, while the racing, the Hot Wheels Unleashed uh, definitely plays well and is very much a toy focused in its its scope and intentionally so. This is like the vistas and the tracks uh, and the speed, just, you know, the, the graphical fidelity of the Horizon series is hard to beat. And so it does a really good job with that. Yeah, 4 was the, it was in the UK, right? Correct, yep. Okay. Just trying to remember. Yeah, and that was one of the things in the announcement that this is uh, their last kind of season is ending in mid-August, and uh, you know, but four was the one that had uh, not only the seasons in terms of live service games, but also it was the first time that they did seasonal weather as well. That it kind of cycled through yeah. uh, those things. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's that didn't play. Is that doesn't play too much in in five, right? The weather. I mean, there's still like rain and stuff. And, but there's it, definitely rain, but you're in change. you're in Mexico. Yeah, you're in Mexico. Yeah, you're so. not you're not suddenly in snowstorms and and ice like you are in the UK. Yeah. So. All right. Yep. All right. Uh, jumping into my first game here, uh, I actually played a, a good bit this past just this past week, uh, much less the last few weeks that I've been out. But I uh, I jumped on and this is through X Cloud through Game Pass. Uh, I play in my time at Sandrock. Uh, which is kind of like the, I don't know if it's a direct sequel or just like the next in the series of the My Time uh, games. So My Time at uh, Portia or Portia uh, was the one previously. Uh, kind of like a cozy survival uh, game. Um, and this one actually, so you can do, there's actually two different uh, downloads you can do. You can do the uh, just single player and go through that and you know, just play it by yourself. Or they actually have a multiplayer online, uh, which is actually the one I jumped into. And uh, just because I want... It seemed like this was kind of involved, and it is. And I'm not sure how much more I'm going to play of it, just because I have I already have like other games, you know, bigger games that I'm playing. Uh, but you, you know, kind of you kind of come into this town uh, and trying to help it, basically help it build it back up. Uh, so there's all there's already like a little town center and stuff, but you know, there's stuff where you can upgrade and you'll you'll build. I think you actually build other buildings at some point. Uh, I'm not sure when, but along with just like your little era that they give you uh, within the town, which is actually kind of outside the town, but it's not, it's not that far away. Uh, but, you know, you do your usual crafting and, and you know, pick up items and, and uh, weapons and stuff like that. You have to craft all that. But it, it's going through the online portion of this, and it just, you know, I'm assuming the single player is probably the same thing, but it seems a little bit more MMO-like. So, like, when you hit the, the menu button, you get, like, a whole, like, you know, uh, task bar or title bar of like just different things you can click into and you know uh your missions and your you know you got this kind of uh not necessarily currency but like um uh just stuff you have to you have to do within the, the game itself and it's just like ah uh, i can't that's why i kind of bounced off of like um dc universe online or just other kind of mmos like that just because it just gets overwhelming not so overwhelming but it's just it's too much and i know a lot of people say that about like open world games, but open world games I can actually, I can do because I can just ignore stuff here. You can't really ignore stuff. You have to do like pretty much everything. So it's like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. So I'm going to, I'm going to try it again. And some of the, the UI stuff, like when I'm going to craft something, you know, it shows you what you need to craft. Some of it's obvious. Like it's okay. That's wood. And that's a rock. There's other things that I, I don't know what it is. And I couldn't, and I was playing on, uh, my Xbox series X and then through the steam deck, um, Game Pass using you know those third party stuff, uh, and, and I didn't see a way this that just I, came to Game Pass recently, right? Yeah, just this past week. Yeah, uh, last week. Yep. Uh, and I didn't see an easy way to kind of see like if I can like if it would tell me like what what each thing you need is. 
uh, maybe on PC it might be you might be able to do that because you know you can just mouse over it and, you know it'll pop up you know what it is but on a controller and I couldn't figure out how to do that if you can even do that and that's kind of annoying like I don't want to have to jump into like a guide like I'd have to go on my phone or on my PC and go onto a guide and say okay what does this little symbol mean like like I said some of it's a rock obviously it's a rock a rock and you know a piece of wood is a piece of wood but there's other ones that were like <sighs> It, it it almost it's like a stick with like a little round piece at the bottom so I was like oh, what the heck is that like I, I didn't know what that was and maybe like within the game there's like a guide you can kind of like search that stuff through but I, even that I couldn't really see if there's anything like that so I, I'll have to go back and you know play around with it a little bit more but it seemed like um, you know just with the crafting and stuff it seemed like you could do you know it's my kind of game there's a little bit of um, combat too uh, at least in, initially it's just kind of the surrounding area there's like this little creatures and bugs and stuff uh nothing too hard but i'm assuming it gets a little bit harder as you you know you progress but i don't think it's anything super complicated like you know like on, on an mmo but I, i'm not sure yet but it, it seems all right uh i know with the previous game there was a lot of issues where uh actually the game was i guess kind of broken there's a lot of bugs and stuff and i guess they never fixed it this one seemed okay well, i haven't uh, other than like the couple hours i played of it you know i, I didn't really see anything that was, you know, hurting it or anything that would prevent me from doing a quest or anything like that. So I don't know. It seems like, and just looking in the forums and stuff and some of the uh, Discord servers I'm on, on uh, it seems like it's it's a lot better. It's not as buggy as, as the previous game. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But maybe I'll, I'll try to, to jump in here or there uh, the next week or so. Although, you know, we're coming on a holiday weekend, so I don't know how much how much gaming I'll be able to do since I got a lot of stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, so that's... Well, and it uh, sounds like one of those where... Like there's a lot to suck you in if you have time to invest in it. Like as you said, like keeping track of everything, knowing what does what, whether or not coming back to it after time. You, like as I've done with some MMOs, like it's great as long as you keep playing. But you step away and trying to remember that stuff when you come back sometimes becomes challenging. Yeah, and maybe I'll even jump into the single player. Maybe it, it's a little bit simpler in there. In there, because you're not you don't have to worry about you know I happen to. I think there's like four other people you can. Um, be with in, in one session online session so um and i had a couple people the first couple of sessions i went into uh we it had you know it was i think it was the same couple people that i had joined initially uh but then after that i guess they left because they just like left all their gear and like they just gave it to me so i had like a bunch of stuff on there like i don't even know what half of it was so i was like what the heck how did i get all this but then i noticed in the little like dialogue um chat log that it tells you that hey this person left and they gave you you know whatever money or or whatnot so i don't know maybe it's a little bit simpler if, if i just do this the single player but uh we'll have to see but yeah so that's my my time at sand rock we'll see we'll see what happens uh for the future of that game uh it looks like you have a remastered game that you're playing on the ps yeah i a couple of weeks ago well i think last week when i was talking about playing alone in the dark uh getting it through gamefly uh the remaster the night dive studio remaster of system shock uh the original system shock but the remaster came out on pc uh in 23 and then uh, it came out on console's uh, physical release uh, this year as well. So uh, I, I have on Steam, in my Steam library, I've got the original and the enhanced edition. Um, so it was kind of fun to, to, and I never really played a whole lot, right? Like System Shock is, this is the kind of, uh, the the originator of, of what Bioshock came to uh you know that kind of storytelling through audio logs and uh, a lot of immersive storytelling as you were going through uh playing pl going back and playing the original and the enhanced version the enhanced version was really just a, a upskinned uh, to a 2015 version uh this new remake from night dive uh, feels like looks more modern like it definitely you get to your 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 buildings uh, well your space station and your your kind of rooms that you're in are definitely still in the, the you can tell they are pixelated your enemies look a little better um but it runs really smooth it it uh, looks really nice um i, I i could see why it has the legacy that it does um and if you haven't played it like 
going back to the original and trying to kind of compare these two, it, I really appreciate what Night Dive did in terms of making it more accessible in a, in a modern uh, marketplace. So that's the enhanced edition. Uh, no, not that. That is the remake, the re yeah, the remake remaster of System Shock. Um, yeah, I, it is, it's tough to say. <laughs> it is, it is hard to even talk about without getting choked up because of the, the legacy of System Shock. No, uh, sorry about that. I should grab a drink of water here in a minute. But it is, it, it, people have played it before. And if you haven't, but are, are looking to play it, I, I would encourage you to pick up this most recent edition from Night Dive. Uh, I've played other Night Dive remasters, and they do a good job of maintaining the core of what the game was uh, while still making it accessible for a modern audience. Nice. Yeah, I never, uh, I never played this game, but I always saw like, because I think the, like the the box art or the art of it, of it, you know, it's kind of you know, uh, famous, you know, just kind of that. Yeah, right. It is. It is part thing. of kind of gaming culture and gaming history is System Shock and its legacy. Yep. So, so do you see like from uh, Bioshock and just kind of those other games like that as you go, you know, down that lineage? Do you see a lot of like as do you see like you know you have like. Obviously, you have like guns, and like, like I was watching some videos while you're talking, like melee weapons and stuff. But do you have like a power that you can use and stuff like that, like in Bioshock, like the plasmoids? That you um, I don't. I'm not far enough in to say that there's there isn't. I have not encountered it so far. Um, you do end up going into like, you know, kind of the their cyberspace world a little bit, where you do get some different powers. Um, you know, and your perspective changes there. But I, I, it definitely seems like there are augments because you get a couple um, kind of augments that go into your wrist, uh, whatever your kind of mechanism is that's attached to you. So there are places where that definitely f falls in line with the kind of plasmids and things like that. Yes, so you do get you do get some powers as I'm as going back through and looking at it you do get some powers as you go um so yep yeah the, again the, the lineage of it all is i can definitely see where it comes from and i see many things that are inspired by it uh whether that's kind of sci-fi horror games or the kind of storytelling auto you know audio log aspect of storytelling uh i even feel like you know some of the the classic puzzles that we end up doing in terms of opening doors and, you know, things like that definitely have some lineage here as well. So it is, it's earned its, its reputation as being kind of a, a, a cornerstone game uh, in, in video games. And this, this remaster just came out uh, within the last month or so, right? Uh, so I think it, the physical edition it came out just within the last month uh, oh. that the the PC edition came out last year. Oh. So that must yep. have been when I saw. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think if you're playing it on console, it's the console editions I think only just came out in May. Yeah. Ah, okay. Nice. All right, let me jump into my next few uh games actually, and they're all VR games. I've jumped back into some VR this past week, actually weekend. And uh first up is I played Stray a game called Strayed. Uh, and this is all, uh, yeah, these are all Steam games that I played uh, using my Quest 3, using the uh, the cable link, the PC cable link. Uh, so Strayed is basically Rust. <laughs> if you ever played Rust, this is, you know, just a survival game, uh, which I'm obviously I'm big into uh, lately, the last few years. Uh, and I, Rust, I usually only play Rust with, like, my uh, my son, because he, he likes that game a lot. I've tried playing it single player uh, a few times here and there, and it's just, like, unless you can, like, You'd have to go on like every day to to kind of keep up your 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 stuff in that game because you know you you potentially get uh, since this is a persistent server uh, uh, in Stray too along with in Rust you know you you can get you know raided when you're offline so it's you're always there it's always up so it's not like in Minecraft or something um, if you have your own like personal server where you know if you leave then it just shuts down no this is it's always on so uh these games i kind of always wanted to play by myself or you know with somebody else but this one i was like hey, let me give it a try and this is an early access right now um i'm not i don't know if they have a released 
a release date or even a window or anything yet. But I know like pretty much every week there get there, you know, there's an update for this thing. So and I think actually this coming week they have one where there's actually gonna be some animals that you can uh take out and, you know, get their meat and stuff for food. Um but yeah, it's I mean, you, you drop into the world, you just got dropped in there, you know, you don't got anything on you other than like a torch and a um a rock is wow, this is exactly like rust. So you can, you know, like gather, you know, materials, stone and, and wood and stuff. So I did that. Uh, I probably played eh, maybe an hour or so. Uh, so I was able, I was just kind of roaming the world a little bit, uh, only a little section. The map's pretty big, uh, especially for a VR game. I was kind of surprised. Um, you know, just ro roaming the world, just trying to figure out, you don't tell you how to do anything, uh, but I can, just from playing other games, I've kind of figured out, you know, how, how to, you know, uh, how to craft stuff and, and uh, how to just, you know, you fit obviously with the VR game, you're physically just hitting a rock or a tree or stuff to, to gather stuff. So uh, just, you know, learn, learning the, the basic controls. So I did that and then got a. I how does it compare to like Ark Survival? Uh, it's less combat. Yeah, there's less combat um, so far right now. I haven't seen any PVE uh, players or um, uh, enemies. Uh, there is that in Rust. So there, there's scientists, as they're called, uh, in Rust that you can, you know, you can go ahead and there's different, I think there's a few areas within the map where they kind of congregate and you got to go in there and take them out and there's like, you know, better loot in there. Every once in a while, you might see one, you know, here and there, like on a road or something. Uh, but I haven't seen anything like that yet in straight. I didn't, like I said, I only kind of walked a, a small portion of the map. So uh, I did get taken out once. Uh, by, yeah, it definitely looks like it's only PvP. Yep. Yeah, I only got taken out one. I got taken out once so far um, from a, an actual, you know, other player. Uh, even though I wasn't doing anything, thank you, sir. Do you encounter a lot of players, uh, or is that a separate mode, or is it? It's yeah. all one shared space. Yeah, it's just all one shared space. So you'll okay. you'll see people. I saw a few other people. And Maybe you, yeah, I step away for water. So. Oh no no no! I I hadn't got even got to that yet. So you're, you're fine. Uh, I had seen a few other people before that, and you know they just kind of like waved and you know kind of went about what they're doing so uh i was able to you know do the same and then i was going to i think it was like a prison it, the the poi was called uh, it's just like a big <laughs> rectangular building building you know nothing fancy but as i was entering that i got taken out from behind of course because you know it always happens to me in any game you know uh but uh so then after i did that i was like oh man i that's why i don't like playing these games but I, you know i'm gonna keep going because it's it's in this game, it's a little easier because I can physically move around and look and I can hear. Well, I, I didn't hear this guy coming, but I don't know if that's just part of the game or if he was just like crouching the whole time when he saw me. It was kind of dark, so it was kind of hard to see too. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to keep going. So I did get a little base or a little uh, structure down, uh, kind of keep my stuff, you know, in there. Actually, I didn't get to go in today yet. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's still up there. I'm sure it's probably rated, but, you know, you never know. It might be. You know, I was trying to. I was trying to go into the Rust mentality and do this in VR the way I, I kind of built my base. And actually, I thank my son for that because he, he's he's watching all, he's always watching videos on it and how to, you know, build bases, you know, what's the best, you know, kind of build to do and stuff like that. So I've been trying to do that in this game. Um, so I'll we'll have to I'll definitely be playing this a little bit more and just to jump ahead to what's next uh, a little bit more. I know playing this this coming week, uh, just trying to get used to it and, and see uh, what else is in the game. But like I said, it's an early access, so. You know, uh, it's, I think it's a little bare bones right now, but that's, that's fine. Uh, you know, that, that always happens with, with those type of games. Uh, next game is Arizona Sunshine 2, which I have talked about uh, in the past. Same thing, uh, MetaQuest 3, you know, PC Link. Uh, and actually, I was, I was looking through my games for this year. The first game I finished <laughs> this year. So I did actually finally finish Arizona Sunshine 2. Uh, I actually played it with one of my friends. And uh, we had started it back when it first came out. I think earlier in the year, uh, beginning of the year when it first came out and we kind of stopped for a little while. And then we just like, I think Friday we played for Friday night. We probably played for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I went to sleep kind of early that night. And then yesterday, last night, we, we kind of just finished it. And I think it was like maybe two, two and a half hours we played. So not like a super long game, like five hours, maybe, um, not a lot. Of, I mean, it's pretty linear as you're going through the, the story. Uh, it's not a lot of, um, I don't think there's really anything to collect now that I think about it. There's some like kind of Easter eggs for other things, like other games that this uh, developer has made. They, these are the same people that made After the Fall, which is kind of like a um, Left 4 Dead or uh, Back 4 Blood type of game. So you kind of see there's like um, 
like a, actually a video game case that you find in within the world within Arizona Sunshine. So that was kind of cool. Uh, did you see this? Uh, so I'm wondering if they're kind of because basically after the fall, it's kind of the same thing. It's just like a zombie apocalypse happened. So I don't know if this is like if after the fall was kind of like the uh, the evolution of, of Arizona Sunshine, or maybe it's like the next kind of maybe the future of like what happens in that in that world. I don't know. I don't know if they're. Yeah, I don't know if they're connected. Yeah, I just yeah. know after the fall came after Arizona Sunshine. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it was. Ending was all right. Like, I'm not going to give anything away or anything, but uh, I think the first game had a lot, a lot better ending, but just the gameplay itself was really cool. They, they had they actually had melee combat in this one. They didn't have, it was just all guns before. Uh, so they actually did have, there's some things you can find, just like a like a machete or an axe, or uh, I think there was like a cleaver at one point, you know, stuff like that you can kind of pick up to take out the zombies, which actually did seem a little overpowered, but they do break after you know, a certain amount of time or a certain amount of uses. So... I guess they kind of balanced it that way, uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, first game I've <laughs> I've defeated this year or I've completed. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. So hopefully they do some DLC. They did do I think two or three, at least two, maybe three uh, DLC drops on the first game. So hopefully they'll do the same thing here. Ending is, uh, I mean, they could go on. Just, you know, uh, I got, I suppose with the ending, it's I mean you're still in the world and everything. It's not like you die or anything. Not to spoil that, but I mean, obviously, uh, I don't think they're going to kill off the main character. Uh, that doesn't happen too often in video games, but uh, they could do some more DLC. And actually, I don't even think I f played the DLC. I, I think I downloaded it. I don't think I ever played it on the first one. Uh, after we beat that first one, we never we never got back to the, the, the DLC. So I'll have to we'll have to go back and do that just to kind of see what was going on. But uh, yeah, very fun game. Very very. Well, more polished than the first one, and the first one was pretty good. I think that's these this series of games is like kind of the kind of the gold standard, other than um, Half Life Alex. So that one's like pff, that one's like way beyond from what I hear. I, I I've never got into Half Life stuff, so I don't know if I'll ever play that one. Uh, I just I didn't I didn't get into the story or anything, but I know that's like you know everybody's uh, top pick. But uh, for me, at least, Arizona Sunshine uh, series has been a, a really uh, a good. Um, a good series so far on the on the VR space, so uh, having a lot of fun with that. Uh, and then next one, uh, Dragon Fist VR Kung Fu. It sounds exactly like you know the title says. It's you're basically one on one fighting either AI or you know you can go online and fight people. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so you know you just it's kind of like the the boxing games they have on there. Like you can you can actually uh, make a fist obviously uh, and punch people, but you can actually just do like uh, you know with your palm out or even just check jabs with your hand too. Uh, pretty, pretty good hit detection actually. Um, with this one, uh, as, as you're fighting and then there's different arenas and stuff as you're going through that kind of the main, I guess there's a story that there, they say there's a single player story, but it, I haven't really seen any lore or anything as I'm playing. It's just, you can fight people, you know, you just go from one fight to another fight to another fight. So, uh, and then in each arena there's, um, there's like multiple levels of people you can fight. So obviously when you first start out, you can only hit like the first, you know, I think it's like three stars is the, the max level. You only can hit the, like the first star person for like the first couple of, uh, of arenas. And then I think the one I just, the last one I had done was actually, I think I can get to that at least the second star one. I don't think I could do the three star one yet. So it's pretty fun. You know, it's, you can do a duck a jump and kick. Obviously, you can't kick in, in real life. You're just like using a button press, but it's kind of cool. At least you got a kick action too. Uh, but yeah, it's really, uh, really. Uh, this one's. I think this one might be in early access. Also, I have to go back and look. Uh, but it's pretty polished. If it is, um, I haven't. Uh, maybe, maybe if it is early access, maybe that single player story will kind of come afterwards. Uh, I was trying to think of the one game. There was another game that was like that. Um, Hellish Quarter, the one, and that's not a VR game. That's just a regular. Uh, fighting game where um, the, uh, you could tell obviously when playing that game there's a lot of like uh, they'll have like the animation of the character like doing stuff but there's no dialogue or anything or even like uh, you know closed captions stuff like that because they haven't put it in the game yet so I'm hoping maybe with well, this one too they'll you know in the future they'll, they'll put an actual story in there and you know you can actually fight through and have you know like clear cut onions there's there's quite a lot of fighters I think there's like 10, 10 or 12 fighters right now so uh, so yeah, uh, having some fun with that and probably continue playing that one in the future. It does, 
like kind of like the boxing games. It does give you a workout. Uh, I noticed today, actually, and yesterday too, uh, when I woke up, I'm like, why are my arms sore? I'm like, what the heck's going on? I completely forgot I had played this game, you know, the night before. So uh, it does definitely give you a workout. So, um, and then I think you can duck in the game where you actually like ducking because I saw like some of the AI characters do that. I don't know if there's a, like you can do a button. I, I know you can actually physically duck, but I know in some of the games, they, they actually give you a button where you can just press. So I'll have to check that out too because, you know, not not a spring chicken anymore. So <laughs> doing the actual physical ducking is not gonna not gonna be you know too often. Put your so. exercise in when you can. Right? <laughs> That's right. So maybe that'll help me. Who knows? But yeah. So yeah, that that was uh, my my VR. So are you playing all these through the Quest Store or through the through the Meta Store or through Steam and then just using the the link to play them play the Steam games with your. Quest three. Yeah, I'm just doing it through Steam with the uh the link cable. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much nice. I think I think everything other than there's been a couple of games that have been Quest of exclusives lately, like um uh what was that one? I can't remember that one fighting one, the dungeon crawler one that I had done that was only uh Quest three and uh showed uh contractor showdown, which was like that battle of royal battle royal, excuse me. I think that was like exclusive for just for like a few days or something so i just waited until the pc version came out and, and bought that one so yeah most of the time that's that's pretty much what i do now so nice my son just before the podcast this is for those listening i we i my camera was not working because my son was just playing uh the his you know oculus on the pc and was playing project demigod Right. So this is. Have you played that? I no, but I've heard it. Yeah, I should look. I should look yeah. to see if that's on sale on Steam. Yeah. Yeah, it came out uh, February of twenty four. It is on sale for twenty five percent off, so for fifteen dollars. Um, nice. And we've played a bunch of. You know, we started on PlayStation VR with the Spider Man games. Uh, twenty two in two thousand twenty two, Superfly came out, which was kind of another kind of open world. Uh, superhero one where you could be you could switch between powers of like Iceman or Spider-Man or uh, Iron Man and then Project Demigod uh, just came out and kind of a different developer but kind of continues that uh, being in kind of a big open world city with a variety of powers you've got a power wheel that can switch between things and he was saying the 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 kind of movement momentum of the swinging physics is some of the best that he's played so yeah, actually, when I yeah, first saw I, I, that's where. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, I was just saying when I first saw Demigod, I thought it was Superfly, maybe because I think Superfly was just like a had like a tech demo, basically, or you know. Early yeah, kind of was, but it's a different developer. Maybe oh, okay. there's some people connected to it. Like looking at it, I haven't done the research on each developer, but they're they're two different developers. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, even some similar. of the city stuff looks pretty similar. Yep. Yeah. Which could just be kind of preformed assets in yeah. its in its engine, right? No, I think it, you know it's for for as you know, for the the kind of market share that VR has, that there are still experiences that are so unique in VR that aren't necessarily kind of you cannot duplicate it in kind of a a flat traditional gaming space. Yeah, De Demi got actually did that actually have a story that you could go through. I have no idea. Oh, you don't know? Okay. Um, I was just wondering. Yeah, because I know it was Superfly. I, I mean, was I just, kind of like a sandbox. I just watched him. Yeah, Superfly was very much a sandbox. Demigod, I honestly don't know. Um, if there is a story connected to it, it really, we were, I was just watching him swing around and, and you know, get his squats in and, and sweat on. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah. going back to, going back to our, our elderly gentleman podcast here That's of... Right. All right. If you want to finish off with our uh, sure, our I will uh, go from <laughs> my elderly gentleman comments uh, to say like, eh, you know, I play a lot of sports games, probably because I wish I could play them in real life, right? Uh, um, uh, you know, so I, I have this week. I've also been playing uh, NBA Two K Twenty Four. It's on. It's on Game Pass. Uh, it also was on PlayStation, the PlayStation Plus a couple months ago. And actually, what I've been playing is I've been playing the WNBA version uh, within it that you can do, uh, you know, similar to what you have with, uh, you know, just a, a quick pick up and play or play a season or take on an owner. 
or you can do kind of a my character and my career within the WNBA. And the the real difference here is there's no microtransactions. Like you you still earn, you know, you earn credit, uh, not kind of traditional purchasing VC like in regular games of NBA 2K. Uh, but depending on you get graded on your performance, just like you do in my career. You've, you know, it is not nearly as full featured. You don't have as number many as cutscenes, although in 25, there's not really the kind of traditional uh, my career story it, as there has been over the last decade. But here you kind of, you know, it's a much more menu driven. And uh, but there's there's a refreshingness to it of just being able to play basketball and level up a character. Um, and also, it's kind of interesting to from the pace to move from you know i i've been playing nba 2k probably for the last five years on a regular basis and to move to playing wnba and the kind of the pace of the game and the kind of strategy of it in terms of ball movement and shot positioning and shot shot selection is much different than kind of the the quick place drive the lane dunk or set up for a three that you get in NBA. So it, it kind of ch- forced me to change my game plan a little bit, uh, but it's it's been fun to kind of dip in and out and playing it on PlayStation 5 uh, also means that it does some fun things with DualSense that most of my experience has been on Xbox. And so it gives a little bit of different flavor there as well. Again, nothing new, uh, but again, easy to, to jump in and out of uh, as the summer sampling starts to happen, right? Like during the summertime, it is, it's a good time to, to catch back up on some things that we haven't or to go back to some games that we set on a shelf or, or look at the things that have come out this last year and make sure we kind of get a chance to touch on, touch on them while we wait for some, some bigger releases as we head into the fall. Yeah, and then we have all the, all the sales going on so steam sale. yes right and it's it's also very easy to to add to your backlog when the steam sales are right in front of you yeah that's where i got all these games other than arizona sunshine that one i had already or sunshine too but everything else yeah i had bought on the steam sale uh and then i have a couple other games that maybe i'll try to uh, i have to to give it jump into for maybe the next time i'm on so yeah, get through that uh going back to football for a second are you going to be jumping into college football when it comes out it's already pre-ordered, oh. and uh, yes, I am ready to play that. Actually, I, as uh, as I've mentioned on the podcast before, I'm in an online league uh, with a friend, and we've been talking about how many more Madden leagues, uh, how many more Madden seasons do we put in before uh, NCAA comes out, and NCAA comes out um, July 21st or 25th, depending on I think or 24th, depending on what version. You get right if you've paid your oh, yeah. your full on amount. Uh, you get your three day early access. Um, it, it yeah, I'm excited for it this week. There's some more announcements around the the dynasty mode this past week. In uh, EA announced kind of your your top twenty five offense and defense teams. They talked about kind of the the top twenty five hardest places to play in in terms of. The, the fan meter and the uh, what the crowd effects do and things like that. So yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see what the return of of college football looks like. How it, how the transfer portal works. Like the last time that we've had any type of college football, that was not a thing. Uh, and so uh, how to manage a team when anybody could go to the transfer portal and you could be picking up people from the transfer portal and. You know, I think the the fun thing of that I'm looking forward to within NCAA football is really what the what the recruiting looks like. Last time I talked about College Bowl uh, on the podcast in terms of the the you know kind of 16 bit pixel art kind of college game that does a, does some really nice things, and I'm I'm still kind of picking at that on the deck. Uh, but what EA brings to it in terms of, of how college football would play or any college sport would play differently than it's professional. Uh, and it's just been a long time since we've had a college sport uh, option within yeah. video games. It's been a while. Uh, I was going to say, I was kind of surprised by the, the release date, but I guess that makes sense because Madden's what, end of August, early September? 
Yeah, traditionally, well, traditionally Madden's been like mid-August oh. or, or late August. Um, and historically, NCAA would come out three to four weeks, you know, a month before uh, Madden. So yeah. I can remember all the way back playing NCAA 2001 on the PlayStation and playing it for for quite a while and then uh, trading it in to, oh, maybe it was even Funko Land in the Midwest at that time still yeah. before GameStop sucked everything up um, and picking up Madden 20, you know, 2001. So, yeah, it's, it's always kind of come out prior to to the professional sport game. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So that is it for the round robin. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, coming up next this coming week? Anything? Uh, I think we talked about it you know, a little bit. I, I talked about it last week about wanting to play some Fallen Aces. Uh, definitely need to, to get in and, and play some of that. Um, you know, I, I want to come back to Battle Crushers or whatever it's called. What did I talk about in the beginning? Right? Yeah, Battle, Battle Crush. Crush. There right. we go. Um, to see if it's something that is sticky enough for me like it's easy in a free-to-play game to jump in and like understand what it's doing and appreciate it for what it is but whether or not it, you know the 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 cost investment of like do i want to spend my time doing this or it, is this something that's easy to bounce off on because it's free to play so i'm curious to see if it it gets its hooks in me um like we talked about uh Squad Busters got to level 52 or like overall level 52 of my like, uh, and then this week I uninstalled it for the first time. So, uh, you know, but granted, if my Marvel Snap, uh, you know, relapses have been uh, any indication, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to be uninstalled, but yeah. it is, it's nice to have something on, on mobile to kind of fill in the gaps in between the day when it's just a quick pickup play in between time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still going through Squad Busters now. I think I'm in the 30s, maybe, level 30s. Um, yeah, they just released uh, a new map and some new characters that you can get. So uh, it's kind of perfect for you know for me since I was already I just started out anyway. So, uh, but yeah, it's, I'm still plugging away at that every now and then. Uh, like I mentioned, I'll probably still go through Strayed and excuse me, Dragon Fist. Excuse me. Um, play some more session when. Uh, get get uh some more time on that hopefully he gets fallen aces like you mentioned um but yeah uh i had a question for you too now i forgot what it was i can't remember uh, that's right this dead air is great podcasting too much, yeah too much uh too no, many right? i mean i think this, my head. this has been a nice a good show of kind of i was thinking about this as we were putting the the agenda together like this is hasn't been anything really big that we're talking about this is, it gives us a chance to kind of go back and clear some decks of of things that we've been playing that haven't had a chance to kind of bubble up to the surface. Yeah. Oh, I was going to mention Marvel Snap. I put that on my uh, Steam Deck, but I still haven't. I haven't. I haven't popped it open yet. <laughs> Again, like, cause, like I used to, because it's been like, ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, it sucks you in, right? Yeah. It is. I mean, it's kind of like, like Squad Busters too. Like uh, I got frustrated a few times because it's like, what? How am I getting? You know, because I, I got my whole team got taken out, and it's just like, what? What's going on? But you know, it just. I don't know if there's any kind of matchmaking in that game or not because sometimes it seems like it's like I'm fine for like a few games and then I just get absolutely destroyed. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I have some wild swings in Squad Busters. And part of it is the randomization of what you get, right? Yeah. In terms of what you pull from your from your chess. Like I may start off and my first match back will be a, a finish in the top three and then suddenly I'm in seventh place. Um, yeah. yeah, I it'll be interesting to see how long you stick with it. Like I... I enjoy it, but it's also like I got to the point where it became really shallow for me in terms of what it is, and you know the the strategy was relatively straightforward. So yeah. I think that's where I'm interested to see what Battle Crush can do in terms of give me something with a little more depth in terms of a of a mobile battle royale that's got you know some variety of characters in it. Yeah, I think once you get, I can see in in battle or not battle crushers in uh, squad busters. Now I'm getting confused. Uh, I can see in squad busters like once you get like a lot of the characters or most of the characters, then you're kind of set. Like you can, you could probably just get through games and you're pretty much fine all the time. Uh, I'm well, still, I'm and still then you get into the though, so. yeah, that's fair, right? Like I think I I built up a lot of my team, but now I'm at the stage where, like in any Supercell game. It takes a lot of shards, characters to level them up to you know yeah. 
so that your character that you start with is not the smallest version of it. Um, but if you've thrown a bunch of money into it, it's easy to get those shards. And so yeah. not having paid anything for it, uh, or maybe the dollar fifty. Oh no, I paid five dollars for the like starter battle pass. Um, like, but not sunk anything more in there since then. So it is. It has that that hook of the monetization within a mobile game of uh, you know the the kind of bell curve of of accessibility versus financial liability uh, ends up kind of catching you at some point in there. Yeah, I did the same thing. I got that uh, the five dollar pass, and then uh, I don't know. It's like the next pass is like ten dollars, and it's like eh. like I know it's like a hundred tiers too. Uh, I think I believe, um, but I think it's I don't know if it's less time though. It seemed like it was less time to to complete that battle pass. Seems like it's. A, I don't. I honestly don't know. I think a part of it is like I realize like I, given the fact, given the way that it it doles out, like you don't get you get three chests and then they start to, like the way the me mechanism works. Wow, we are deep, deep diving in some <laughs> battle crushers here at, at the at the squad busters here at the end. So uh, no, right? But like the way that uh, this is the this is the the monetization loop of it, right? Like you finish a game and you you have the chance to unlock a chest. Or not a chance. Like if you win, depending on what you win, how what place you're in, you have more options to upgrade that chest. It's still a little bit of randomization in there in terms of what yeah. you get. Um, but those chests, you only get three. You can keep playing consistently, but you don't get chests. And then like you use your three and then you have to respawn for a timer. Or you have to use some coins to yeah. replenish that. Keys. And yeah. Yep, which you can do with in-game currency or you can do with real-life currency. So I think the, the challenge there is like, okay, so if I'm not going to... If it's not going to be a, a constant money suck for me, like I logged in, played three games, and came back at the end of the night and played three more games, right? Because by the time it respawned, it, if, they, if that timer was faster, it, it would be easier to, to keep engaged with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, let's... <laughs> We'll quit on the squad buster. Uh, talk for now. Uh, the then mobile keep minute. Going. All right. <laughs> we could keep going. I could keep going for sure. Uh, all right. So next week, episode 345. Yes. Uh, will be you, Mr. DBQ Hams at the uh, primary host and game logic should be back. Uh, I will actually, I will for sure be out next week. Uh, I think I said I might, but I, I will be out. Unfortunately, <clears throat> possibly the following week, but I think I might be back then, uh, but we'll see, but you will be the primary host for next week. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. It was good to be back. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been so just weird the last few months. Like I've been here, for, I think twice for the last like two months. So uh, it's okay. Life happens. So yep, it was good though. Uh, Game Logic uh, took a break this week, so that was nice. Uh, he got some time off, spend with his family, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, it's great to have you back. Good to chat again. So yep, and thank you everybody for who's watching this. And this is obviously going to be VOD because we couldn't use the uh, the stream. Uh, stream yard uh, just because the way that's that's set up so this is going to be uh, just a recording thank you everybody for watching if you did watch uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already onto our youtube channel uh, e2kg network uh, and you can check us out on soundcloud also and i think podcast still is still up there maybe um, so uh, any other uh, podcasting uh, apps that you can find out there i'm sure hopefully we'll be on there uh, DB, once again, thank you for joining me. I am Towmaster99, and we will see you next time. Oh, for sure.